Amen. Sometimes you got to speak to death. Now, see, I don't want to get out the gate. Too. You have to, because, I mean, nothing has really changed. Nothing changed but the news. Nothing changed but the news media. Boy, I posted a, I po you know, I've been in trouble all week. I've been acting, I, I, I don't care. But I, man, I was in Twitter jail. I've never been in Twitter jail before. Felt weird. I felt like a little kid. I was mad because I felt like a child. Like, you don't put me in no time out. Yeah. And then they have the clock ticking. Like, they'll put you... <laughs> and then you 12 hours, and then it's counting down when you can have access to your account again. I started, I started getting mad, but the Lord kept reminding me, that's theirs. I don't even know his name. What's the name of the owner of Twitter? That's his. So I can't, be, I can't be somewhere getting mad protesting him, and that's his. Because I want the exact same ability to do that if somebody is in here and I don't want them in here. Brother, you, count down from 12 from outside. <laughs> so, you know, we don't want to mess up the freedom of liberty and all of those things by trying to control what other people are doing. It's sad, but I'm not fighting Twitter. So I'm sitting there looking at the time tick down. I felt like a little kid. I just started getting mad. But, so after, you know, I had a post ready. Soon as, I mean, soon as the clock strike zero, I'm posting something else. And I had it queued all up and the Holy Spirit said, don't post that. So, okay, Lord. Because people do depend on the stuff that I, I post. Globally, they do. And so I have to, you know, I don't want to just, you know, I mean, I want to, but you have to use temperance. Amen. Amen. You got to use self-control. Then you can't be emotional. And that's what I was. My next tweet was an emotional one to get back at Twitter. And I was going, and I had them in it. <laughs> Let me tell y'all what I think about this time out y'all put me on. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I just, you know, so I waited. So they showed me the tweet. They said, this is the tweet you have to delete to have your account enabled. So I started looking through, you know, uh, the tweets and, you know, and the one that they, I thought, oh yeah, I, I, I probably shouldn't have posted that. Cause I said, everybody's gonna die. They trying to kill us all. That's what I said. <laughs> I said, they trying to kill us all. Okay, all right. We have to put you in a timeout. You, you went a little too far and I did. I did, I know when I'm wrong. I know when I'm wrong, nobody have to tell me I was wrong, so. Hey. <laughs> Amen, but I posted something on Instagram. I, didn't even, I see I didn't even bother Twitter with it. But it was juicy though. Oh, it was good. They were in Montreal, did y'all see that? When they were getting ready to do the news and they were getting ready to, <laughs> to mandate mask and tell everybody, you know, that you need to wear your mask, but none of them had their mask on and they didn't know the cameras was rolling. So once they went live, they said, we're going live. Everybody start rushing to put their mask on. Before it was, yeah. That's on Instagram right now. It's a freak show. They were just rushing to put them on. I was like, this is, this is just crazy. But it's the time we're living in, amen? And you just have to, you know, basically you just have to decide which side you're going to be on. Amen? But... Even just as important as that, man, I am flipping through slides, huh? Nobody tell me. I'm preaching, the slides going by themselves. <laughs> oh, this is what you're saying. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but even more important than you picking a side and knowing what side you're on, you're gonna have to be good with people not being on your side. All week, that's what I've been dealing with. In my heart, God's been just gutting stuff out. You're going to have to be good with what people think about you. Amen. Or you won't sleep at night, and they will. So you have to be good with what people think about you in these end times. People are going to assume. They, and people use what they're going through, their own mistake, their own trauma, whatever it is, to develop an opinion about you. 
you have to be smart enough to know that most of the time when people have something against you they really have something against themselves so you can't react every time someone is in disagreement with you because most of the time you are reacting to something that's not even real I don't know who I'm talking to in here I sound like TBN I don't know who I'm talking to but this is for somebody but you're gonna have to get that kind of courage where you can stand alone if you have to in 2021 amen because obviously going with the crowd the crowd is crazy the Bible said wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many there'll be so you got to be good with it you just have to be good with it I can't worry about what folks say I, you, you can't because folks are going to say it regardless if you're doing good mm, you're always doing good if you're doing bad ooh, he's doing bad they got to say it because they're not happy with themselves. And you can't make them happy with themselves. You can help them. You can give them money. Take them shot. You can do whatever. And when that wears off, guess what happens, Sister Amy? They're going right back to hate. So don't look at somebody and say, don't be worried about folks. We're not going to worry about folks amen we had a great time at the swap yesterday i told him this swap right here was special i think we had the best quality of stuff we've had folks was giving great stuff somebody came up yesterday it was great stuff in the swap and that's what it is we don't want to give our trash in the swap hey man i ain't wearing this don't give it but it was stuff with tags on it and new, a lot of new stuff. And then they had a lot of body products. We had a whole beauty supply. Wigs and, like they, like they say in the hood, fingernails and wigs and rouge. And rouge, it was rouge. I saw rouge. Had a little makeup counter. Sister Ashley's working a makeup counter. Did you make anybody up? Show them what, uh, show them what they're getting? Oh, okay. <laughs> they had all of that stuff. Fashion fair. <laughs> I just made that up. I was playing in my mama's purse when I was young. You can tell, right? Fashion fair. I was playing. There's no such thing as fashion fair? What happened to it? I used to play with all of that stuff in my mama's purse. You know, the, you just dump the purse out. That's my car. That, that rouge right there, that's my truck. And I'm just, <laughs> man, my, my imagination. <laughs> so that's what I thought of fashion fair. But amen. Well, anyway, it's good to have you here. Glad you are here. Y'all, the prayer has been just wonderful. I mean, God has visited us during this prayer. I think the Zoom messed up Wednesday toward the end. Something happened with the Zoom and uh, so some of y'all that weren't here got cut off or whatever, well, you should have been here. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but you got cut off, it, something happened, but we'll definitely have that fixed this coming Wednesday. But it was just good to have, we all had almost 400 people here with the Zoom. <laughs> Amen. And that was a blessing. It was a blessing. To, it's a blessing to pray. Look, y'all, all the extra breath you have need to go into praying. Look at somebody and say, quit talking about people and pray. Man, that takes up so much. Pray. When I say talking about people, I'm just talking about anything. You talking about Nicki Minaj and folks that don't, I mean. You might be talking about some clones or something. You don't even know if that's really them. Just whatever they feed you, you talking about it and ooh, no, pray. And pray for them if you care. Amen. We don't want anybody lost. Amen. So anyway, we're going to be prayerful in this hour. So we got how many? Two more prayers? Two more prayers and uh, for this month. And then we're going to see what October brings us. And we're going to... 
I mean, that don't mean you stop praying. And that don't mean you just go eat sugar. Some of y'all, some of y'all gave sugar up in September forever. Look, look, I, I, I said that just to hear the crickets, Jay Bryant. I, I only want to hear the crickets. Jay looked at me like, well, I know you heard mine because I have no intentions of continuing this. But the thing... <laughs> Hey. But the thing is, let me make this make sense. The thing is, just moderately bring it back into your life if you're going to do it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> let me move on. Some of y'all, some of y'all, crazy. They're crazy. It's a crazy church. Woo! But, uh,. <laughs> Yeah, but ooh, ooh, and they, you know, they they killing me online. Well, they all, I'm dead online. They know I'm killing me. <laughs> just dead to online. <laughs> but the, oh, we a real cult now, since we done gave up sugar. <laughs> y'all know y'all from the cult? No. <laughs> it's a real cult without sugar. If you, you, everybody obey it. <laughs> Ah, boy, that's a that, that's a crazy cult to try to brainwash people one day a week. The school system is a better cult than this. What day a week? Well, amen. Well, I like this cult. Adamantbeliever.com for what's Why are you watching it anyway? Adamant Believer. You must like it. You have to like it if you keep watching. I'm not watching stuff I don't like. If it's a bad show on TV, I ain't watching that. I ain't watching it every week to see how bad it is. <laughs> if I keep watching it to see how bad it is, like the young folks say, I low-key like it. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> I didn't say that right, low-key? Oh. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash love him with your life nine dot pdf loving the lord with your life requires what some people don't know how to love because they don't know how to do what anybody says they only know how to do what they want to do but in order to love the lord you gotta you know that's why you're supposed to grow up with parents so that your parents can teach you how to do what somebody says. Amen. Amen. Teachers in school used to call home, tell your parents, and your parents would correct you for them. Because you were used to doing what your parents said. Now people are growing up without parents. Me and my son, we were just riding yesterday, and we were just talking about this generation, the new generation. He was talking about the generation. He's 25, so he's talking about the generation under him. And how it, he said they're just lawless. Yeah. Yeah. He used that word. Boy, let him preach. <laughs> he said, Daddy, they're just lawless. Yeah. And, and it's because they didn't grow up with anybody to tell them what to do. Most of them were unwanted, you know, or they were between, or they had a parent that was more into themselves than them. Yeah. yeah. And so. It's hard to teach that generation. It's hard to correct people that aren't used to being corrected. Yeah. That's why the Bible, you know, the, the generation he's talking about, the one under them, I mean, there's just no hope. The world has to end. Because, I mean, if you don't have any knowledge of getting an understanding with someone, do you know how easily manipulated you're gonna be? You can easy, easily manipulate angry folks. An angry generation, people with issues, mad, hate their lives. Oh, you can manip you can sell them anything. Yeah. 
But loving the Lord with your life requires doing ex. Look at somebody say exactly. Exactly what he says. James 1 and 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Doing what? Deceiving your own selves. By being a hearer only. I will never understand it. But the Lord has given me peace about it. How people will come in this church week to week just to be a hearer. That, that, you know, you, I used to take it personally. It used to bother me by me because I'd be like, man, you, you don't want the truth. Like, you don't, it just, what? You will wake up and get dressed and waste your family's time by coming here to be a hero. Yeah. That's hard for me to fathom because I would never do that. I would be fishing somewhere. I'd be hearing the ripples of the water. The, the motor on the boat I would not be in here wasting my Sunday morning just to hear if I'm not going to be a doer right so God requires us if we're going to love him with our lives we have to be doers of what the word says amen you cannot claim to love him if you do not desire to keep his commandments they go together Amen. You can't be the rapper on the award show. Just won a song. Just won an award for a song. Stab him in the neck twice. And at first, I'd just like to thank God, who is the head of my life. Just thank God first. Then I want to thank my producer, Satan. Uh, and the dude that made my beats, uh, Beelzebub. And then... Uh, <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> you got to keep his commandments at some point if you claim to love him. The reason why people have a hard time doing that is because the people they grew up under, the people in their lives that raised them or whatever, said they loved him but didn't show it to him. So their idea of love is skewed. Mama would tell her. Daddy would tell him. I love you, but never spend time with him. And to a child, time equals love. Amen. And so they grow up thinking, well, love isn't always love. Just because somebody said it. And so it's hard for them to love God. So they give God the same thing. Well, I'm going to say I love you, but I'm not giving you any time. I'm not obeying your commandments. Nobody's ever taught me or showed me that. John 14 and 15. If ye love me, do what? Keep his commandments. Amen. I know somebody, well, then we need to keep the Sabbath and we need to keep the, 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 the 10. They want to keep the 10. And listen, y'all, let me straighten this out. Jesus fulfilled the law. He said, a new command I give to you. Yeah. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all thy soul, my spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. Then he said, oh, you can sum all of it up with just this. Love your neighbor. How are you treating your neighbor? Yeah. The folks trying to keep the Sabbath will cuss you out. <laughs> Marry multiple women. But they keep that Sabbath. <laughs> they don't round the corners of their hair. Man, I remember when I used to preach with a flat top. Them five percenters used to tear me up. Oh, Doc, you corner, you round in the corners. Bro, you got dreadlocks. Dread is in the name of your hairstyle. Dread. <laughs> I just pointed to the wall. You got dreadlocks. See somebody looking like, what? I pointed to the wall. You know, you're in the barbershop. Give me that. 
What? That, that, the number eight. <laughs> See, I just showed my age. They don't have that on the wall no more. Did y'all pull it up on the internet now? We used to have a little chart on the wall. You remember that, Deke, don't you? Now, come on. You had a chart on the wall. But if your daddy took you, forget point. His mind was already made up. <laughs> then when he tried to leave, you try to change it. No, you ain't getting me in trouble. <laughs> Man, I remember the word. I mean, it was almost worse than a whooping to let my daddy pick my hair. See, somebody looking like, pick? Pick. And my daddy had to pick. It just looked like a, you know, a clamshell, and then you open it up. And you pull the teeth out of one side. Remember that? And it was rusty. It was rusty. It was melon rusty. Ain't no telling what kind of stuff was getting in my scalp. And he would dig and pull. Skin chips flying everywhere. It's like, Daddy, what did I do to you? What did I do? I'm sorry. <laughs> And you just have to stand there. And I was so short and he was so tall. None of the chips hit him, so he just kept going. Daddy, that's my head flying up. Pieces of my head. Man, that junk was hurt. Man. Boy, you kids, y'all have no idea, man. Y'all could not have, this generation couldn't have grown up like we did. Ever. They couldn't have even gone to our churches. If the pastor even thought that you might have been talking about him, you getting called up and standing next to him while he talk about you. You standing right there and he going in. Uh-huh. See, Sister Juniper called me and told me what you said. He's never looking at you. Told me what you said. Uh-huh. <laughs> Remember that other? Told me what you said. So I just want the church to know we got a gossiper in the church. A gossiper so you don't call her. You don't call her no more. Until we let you know that she's okay. We were scared, man. But... <laughs> But in the Bible, God provides believers, this is beautiful, y'all, with detailed instructions of his requirement. So no one should be walking around not knowing what is required of them. We all have detailed instructions in the Bible. Amen? You just have to open it and read it. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All, oh, how much scripture? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is what? Profitable. profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for what? Instruction. Instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. How many good works? Oh. The Bible is going to get you ready and furnish you with all you need to do anything good. But it provides us with detailed instructions. That's the problem. People don't read the Bible. Confusion comes when you are faced with things that may oppose God's plan for you. So you know what to do, but you start questioning what you should do because you're confronted with things that oppose God's plan. So God's going to speak his plan to you. Your heart of hearts is going to know. You're not going to ever walk around not knowing what to do. I, I see that's hard for somebody to understand if you do what God said God built the church so there would be a preacher that would be sensitive to what it is you're dealing with so you will hear what you need to do you get the word you will read what you need to do your life you'll have answers all around the people don't that don't have the answers are people that aren't where they're supposed to be He said, no good thing will he with hope. Why would God not, why would he not give you what you need? He 
said an earthly father would do that. How much more will the heavenly father who created you and loves his creation, how much more will he do for you? He's going to give you everything. Look at somebody and say, he's going to give you everything you need. Look at somebody and say, I have everything I need. The questions come when you're faced with things that oppose God and now you're trying to choose whether or not you should do it. But you know what to do. The word has come. The word has placed you. God has placed you somewhere where the word is being preached. Everyone in here. Everyone in here. Should know what to do. When they issue the mandate on your job. You should know what to do. You're getting the word in here. And you're reading the word when you're not in here. You, you, you know what to do. Look at somebody and say, you know what to do. Y'all, you do. You really do. That's why you come here. You know what to do. You got the podcast. You can go back years and find answers to stuff you need. That's what I recorded it for. That's what it's there for. Eddie texted the, the other day. He's like, I'm listening to a message from 2011. He said, and it's the exact same thing that's being preached now. So you know the word has been consistent in here. Amen. The word has been consistent. Growth, if you've applied it, has been consistent. So you know, you know, you know, but something comes up mm, to get in the way of that or to mess that up. Confusion comes when you are faced with things that may oppose God's plan. Sometimes when the world requires something of you that is contrary to God's will, you begin to question God's purpose. So that's the world's job. The world's job to make you go away from what God wants of you. Every woman in here, the world's job is to make you not a, 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 a mother or a wife or a lady, period. Yeah, the world wants you to be a dagger. <laughs> they want you to be something other than a woman. Every man in here, the world wants you to be effeminate. All that sugar you've been fasting from, the world wants that sugar in you. <laughs> wants you to just be a tart, a pop tart. That's what the world wants. They want all the men emasculated, weak, and they want all the women strengthened, strong. They want to reverse God's order. They regress, reverse God's order, then there'll be chaos and corruption. The Bible said, I'm not, let me, let me even back up. In China, they are removing all the effeminate actors and actresses, I mean actors and musicians and everything off the internet and off TV. They won't even show images of effeminate men in China. They say because it's messing up the young boys. Y'all clap it, don't clap! That's terrible, that's China. It's communists. <laughs> it might kill them tonight. I don't know, don't, don't clap. But I'm just letting you know the contrast. Don't ever. Clap for China. I don't care what I say. I don't care if I say it's China dishes from China. You don't clap. Just give me that Tupperware. Don't we don't clap for don't clap for China. China is just waiting on the signal to come get all of us. That's why they're doing it. That's why they know America is womanly. They know we are effeminate as a nation. We know men, they, they know men can't stand up in this, to this generation of women. The women are pushed and the men are shunned. Yeah. Shunned by Jezebel. Amen. But you can't blame it all on Jezebel because there'd be no Jezebel if there was a Ahab, somewhere in Ahab, got emasculated.
1 Corinthians 14 and 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of what? Peace. As in all churches ooh, of the saints. It's going to be peace at ABC. Amen. We've been praying for that. We prayed it a couple of weeks ago. It's going to be peace in here. So you might as well get along with folks. Go to them and just say, look, I, I, you know I'm crazy. I was tripping. <laughs> and even if they say, yes, you were, you are crazy. <laughs> say, I, but, but I love you, though. We all crazy sometimes. Maybe not as crazy as some. But you just go to them and say, look, let, let just, we in the same church. One can't be sitting on the right, the other way on the left, and y'all staring each other down in all this darkness. It's too dark, you can't even see them. Blocking each other online. How you blocking church members, your members? Now, if they're talking foolishness, they need to be blocked, and they need to be out of here. Amen. But quit making the internet. Look, y'all, come on. That ain't even, do you know the internet's not real? Have a real relationship with somebody in here. Love on your brothers and sisters. We're going to have peace in this church. We got to get down to a hundred members. A hundred. That's less than a hundred. A hundred. We got to get the number down to have this peace. We're going to get the number down for the peace. Amen. And don't be walking around. See, when we was a small church, things was better, whatever. whatever. No, don't, don't even say that because I love some of these folks. Amen. Some of these new folks are golden. Just what ABC needed. Amen. But we're going to have peace in this church. Y'all, I'm not going out in the world to foolishness and then got to come in church and folks can't get along. And the whole world is on fire burning about to end. And you in here with some drama against somebody because somebody said at the end of the world Somebody said. Most of the time it was true. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. <laughs> Man, we're going to be in here. We, it's going to be peaceful in here. Hey Amen. I'm going to tell you where to take your drama. Some folk grow up like that, though, and they family. Everybody just punching each other just oh, get out my face snatching weave out and all that you grew up with that we're not doing that in this church get your hand off her weave in this church <laughs> we are we're not be, gonna be in here fighting each other man we got a devil to fight Amen. And braids just all down the aisle. Just, woo, she got into it again, huh? Just look at just. just fighting in the church. Man, this is the place where we're supposed to have peace. Amen. Give us peace at ABC, Lord. The word of God is God's logic. And he answers all of our questions through his word. It's his logic. It's the way he thinks and understands his word. He knows it's complicated. That's why he gave you a whole Bible. 66 books so you can get a small glimpse of his logic. That's all it is is a small glimpse. It's all we can handle. Amen. Moses prayed to him, no, God, we need more of you. We need more. So come on down and visit us. <laughs> he came down there and them people prayed him away. <laughs> In the name of Jesus who is to come. <laughs> I need you to vacate this camp. We'd be all right, Lord. We'll we listen to Moses. We sorry. <laughs> God Amen. And I'm good with not seeing them right now. I don't be praying them prayers. That's some of y'all getting super zealous and spiritual. Like, God, I need to see. Oh, give me a sign. I don't need no sign. Give me the Bible. I believe what it says. I don't need a sign. I don't want no sign. 
And you don't want one either. You think you do. Just show me one of your angels. Just let me see that face. That's all right. I'm good with just believing. The word of God is God's logic. He answers all of our questions through his word. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was what? The word. And the word what? The word and the word what? The word was God. So God is his word. The word is God. That's why it's so hard for you to read it consistently. Look somebody. Oh, no, not me. Yeah, you. You have about sometimes where you're supposed to pull it out and you don't. Because it's God. Especially when there's something you're trying to do. You don't want the word to tell you no. Don't y'all leave me hanging out here. You know you done put God off until a certain day happened. It's my birthday, and it's going to be a whole bunch of drinking that day. So I'm not reading the word until two days after. Because the word going to tell me not to have that party. Like the old folks say, you better hope Jesus don't come back. While you planning that party. <laughs> Amen. God ain't coming. He ain't stopping by the club. He leaving everybody in there. <laughs> but the preaching and teaching of God's sound doctrine builds up our faith so we can apply what the word is saying even when it's not convenient or when it goes against what the world suggests please hear what I just read you the preaching and teaching of God's sound doctrine builds up our faith so we can apply what the word is saying this is the problem with our nation now people don't get the preaching and teaching of sound doctrine they have not committed see it's a big difference to just randomly listen to people and then commit to a voice <laughs> yeah the hand claps gonna thin out on this one and good yeah when you commit and say this is the voice that I believe God wants me to follow when you commit then there's no buffet so you're not able to take the tongs and get the, get the meat you like and then leave the meat you don't like out there. When you commit, when you commit, you got to sit in here and hear it even when it stabs you in the neck. Because you committed. And you know it's the truth. I don't want to be anywhere where I'm getting spiritual diabetes because everything they say is sweet. And catering to me. Don't cater to me, man. I'm trouble. You got to go against my flesh so my flesh don't get me in trouble. I need the preaching of the word. When it's hitting other folks, when it's hitting me, that's what I need, the truth. I preach the truth. Well, God called me to preach the truth. But I preach the truth also because I want to hear it. See? I, I believe what I'm preaching. I believe it, Walter. What would I be doing up here? I need it. I preach the gospel because the gospel saved me. Amen. I was a sinner just like all sinners are. And I needed the preaching of the gospel for the saving of my soul. And I don't need it one time. I need it all the time. Amen. So the sound doctrine, when you hear it, it builds up faith. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing and hearing by the word. Of God. So you got to hear. So you read, but then you also have to hear to build up the faith. How many times have you come in here and felt like you couldn't do something and then after you heard the word, you believed by faith that you could? Has that happened to anybody? You believed it wasn't going to work out. You heard the word by faith. You believed. 
You read the Bible all week, but once you heard the word, faith cometh by what? Hearing. Now they're trying to demonize everything about the church. I mean, they don't want church anymore because they know the power. They know the gathering of those in Acts 2 when they first gathered in the upper room. They know that the world, not earth, the world was changed forever. Forever. The Bible said a great event happened. A sound like a rushing mighty wind came. Cloven tongues of fire sat on their heads. They began to speak in the language of everyone that was watching. There was a grand entrance of something or someone. Changed the world forever. The world has not been the same since that occurred. Power to speak against death, sickness, disease, cast out devils. All those things came. Came because they were assembled together. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah, so they want to demonize the gathering. They want to demonize because they know if we come in here. And we're on one accord. Nobody's dying of what they're talking about. Not one person. They know that. Can I keep preaching in here? I believe I'm preaching. Somebody said that in one of the comments. You always talking about, can I keep preaching? You know you can keep preaching. It's like, who broke your heart? Who broke your heart? That's the first thing I think of now. I'm just like, who broke you? What did they do to you? Who knocked your ice cream off the cone and left you there? Left you there. They didn't buy you another one. They just left you there to look at it. <laughs> When will, I mean, when our will and desires are in the way of hearing or having the courage to apply God's mandates, we fast and pray to clearly hear and remove all hindrances. Yeah, that's what we've been doing every Wednesday. You're supposed to have been doing. And, I mean, sugar's a hindrance. So we, we gave sugar up for a month. Y'all believe sugar is a hindrance? Some of y'all was in love with, some of y'all was married to sugar. You had a sugar ring on. A ring pop. <laughs> he done married sugar. <laughs> ring, necklaces and stuff. You know, my grandmama had a, uh, a, a candy house. I was talking to somebody about that, and they was like, what? I think that was Bria. I was talking about this candy house. I said, yeah, mama, we had a, we had a candy house. Back, that's old school, where everybody on the street come and buy the candy in the garage, and there'd be pickles in there, and Kool-Aid pickles, and now ladies all in it. Everybody, look at everybody. <laughs> Y'all, I've, I've changed the subject. This is the craziest church. This church is crazy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm trying to tell a story, and y'all think, <laughs> ooh, yes. Oh, ooh. Uh-huh, what? Ooh, what flavor was it? What, what the... <laughs> Y'all ain't worth a quarter. I'm not going to talk about the candy house no more. I'm going to change the subject. When our will and desires, I'm not finishing. No, no, no. There's something wrong with y'all. Go back to the candy house. What was that inventory like? What, what kind did they have back then? I just want to make sure. Just... When our will and desire are in the way of hearing or having the courage to apply God's mandates, we fast and pray. So you take away these things. You took away sugar, which was a hindrance. You take on, on Wednesdays, you don't eat anything or whatever. We're doing that because sometimes our wills and desires are in the way of us hearing 
Or sometimes our will is in the way of us having the courage to apply what God is saying. Yeah. Our will is too strong. The flesh is too strong, so you got to kill it. How do you kill the flesh? You starve it. Stop giving it what it wants. Yeah. Who will I not watching any movies for 18 hours? It's a, a movie fast is no fast. Most of that you should have been watching anyway. Don't be trying to give up something you should have gave up anyway. No more R-rated movies for a month. It's not even hard. <laughs> no, no. Stop eating for a day. Yeah, go the whole day without eating. They get long. The whole day gets long. You've been complaining about how you don't have enough time to do anything. Man, I don't have enough time. I mean, time just go fast and watch. Watch time just hook. Like that squirrel on, over the hedge. <laughs> yeah, well, you just, just stop eating and watch how long. I watch how much time you have to do stuff. You've done things you've just been waiting to do. Look up, it's just one o'clock. One o'clock! But you have to fast. That's why we do it. We fast and we pray to clearly hear and remove all hindrances. Right? So when our will and desires are in the way, and they get in the way. How many of you, your will gets in the way? Your will's going to get in the way. So you have to sometimes just take a step back, say, hey, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray to get my will under control so I can hear what God wants me to do. Amen? Joel 2 and 12. Therefore, also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with what? All of your heart. Sometimes you have to do that. Amen? Fast long enough, you will be weeping. Go on a 30-day fast from sugar, you will be mourning. We are hindered by our desires, so fasting, praying, and seeking God will always give us a clear understanding of what we should do. Before you're making a big decision, why don't you fast and pray and seek God? James 4 and 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he's going to do what? Lift you up. Loving him with our lives means that even when our flesh disagrees, Woo! How many of you, your flesh disagreed with what the Lord said? Or the world is against it. A lot of times we do stuff just because the world is doing stuff. But we still move on God's word so that we can finish what God started in us. Has he started anything in any of y'all? Hadn't he started? If he started it in you, you know what he promised? He said he promised he's going to complete it. He promised he's going to complete it. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great. Oh, the scripture. I mean, let me back it up. Got to read it slow. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee. So if you're walking around and saying God didn't answer you, you're not telling the truth. He said he will answer you. And he said, I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things, which what? It's going to show you what you don't know. Powerful scripture. Oh, that's one of my favorite scriptures. Summary. Somebody still want to hear about the candy house. Can you make a video in your office and put it on Instagram? I just want to know about this candy house. <laughs> Heard there was some great and powerful things in there going on in grandmama's garage. <laughs> Me and my cousins, we bankrupted her because we were such thieves. We, were, we, we was eating all the candy and we wouldn't put none of the money in, in, in the sack. 
that's your mama. And she'd come in there and whoop us and fuss or whatever, and all our mouths be red and green and cherry. Just, we just, <laughs> we was <laughs> eating cherry chains and Alexander grapes. Y'all remember the cherry chair, dude. <laughs> All right, Sister Sabatha. She's from Boston baked beans. She, 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 she naming candy that can work as food, too. <laughs> that's, that's some value in a Boston baked bean. That was once the bean. It has nutritional value. <laughs> so many today are questioning God. They have totally forgotten what God told them and how they once had confidence in where they are supposed to be. Y'all, this is, I wrote all of this, this, this summary right here. I mean, this just touched my heart because it just made me think of this generation and so many people just this is the way people are and it's very sad that people are this way at the end but so many today are questioning God they have totally forgotten what God told them and how they once had confidence in where they are supposed to be once upon a time there was an understanding but now there is confusion people have allowed strange voices the cares of this life and their own personal deficits to cloud their vision so they can no longer see what God intended for them. They once knew what God said, and now they are piecing together a bogus plan because they are totally out of his will. All because they lost ears for his voice and eyes for his path. This is why we fast and pray, so we don't lose ears for his voice and eyes for his voice. You just got to put your flesh and check amen. Amen? amen so this won't happen many did not take the time to clear their eyes and ears of the direction of the flesh they did not take the time to fast and pray before they moved which has set their lives in a tailspin undirected by God the pressure and pain of this life stifled their once steadfast pursuit of God's intentions now they are making it up as they go. Far from God's plan and full of selfish motives. This is not how you love him with your life. To truly love him with your life means you will do what he says no matter how it goes against your own will or the plan of our society. Amen. Don't be trying to use Romans 13 to justify doing everything this government tells you to do. We supposed to obey the laws of the land. Ain't no vaccine a law. Can I preach in here? It's not a law. It's a strong suggestion. That's all it is. The mandate is not a law. And when they create a law that goes against God's moral law, I have to disobey it. And I will disobey it. And I'm going to teach others how to disobey it. And we're going to all stand against you if you're standing against God. Oh, obey the laws of the land. What if the three Hebrew boys had obeyed the laws of the land? The law was for them to bow to the statue once they heard the sound of the music. They decided, you know what? I'm going to disobey this law and I'd rather die. What if Daniel had obeyed the laws of the land? Are you, what if little young Stephen had obeyed them? 
don't say nothing else. You know what? I'd rather die than be quiet. I'd rather die than be quiet and not share this truth I have with you. Please. It's not what Romans 13 is. Man, you're distorting the word. You're changing the word because you scared. You're scared. You didn't teach your people nothing so nobody knows what to do. All you did was buck and shout and make noise and, and, and bring a bunch of sissies in out of sing. You did that for all these years. You didn't lay any kind of foundation. You didn't teach them what was going to happen. You didn't teach them what the end times were going to be like. You didn't teach nobody how to stand in the face of persecution. Don't go to changing the word to cater to your weakness. The word of God is true and right. And I'm going to stand on it with my life. Why would I want to live here if I can't live the word? <laughs> to truly love him with your life means you will do what he says no matter how it goes against your will or the plan of our society. When you get weak, you wait until you are strengthened to move. Oh, I just preached a sermon right there. When you get weak, because you're going to get weak. When you get weak, don't do anything. Wait till you're strengthened. Wait till you have understanding. Don't move without understanding. You do not make emotional decisions or you will be constantly piecing your life together, trying to save face and never truly able to do what God wants. This will force you to become an enemy of the truth because you ignore the truth about yourself. <laughs> you will hate those that progress and shun the voices that remind you of the times when you really followed God's plan. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? I was praying the other day and I was like, Lord, just, you know, I'm good with folks hate me. I'm, I'm good with them being mad, hate me. With them. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I don't know how many times I got to say, they don't hate you. They hate the fact that they didn't do what you told them they should. They didn't do it. And we all got to face that and decide whether or not we're going to do it. But you can't be mad at the person that gave you the advice that you refused. Can I keep going? If you really love him with your life, you will move when he says move. No matter what it costs you. You will painfully endure tough times and stay the course that he has set for you. No matter what comes your way. Why doubt him now? Look at somebody and say, why doubt him now? He brought you this far and he promised to finish what he started. He promised it. He, he promised it. That's a guarantee on my life. That's a guarantee, J. Bryant. I'm guaranteed to finish what he started. Because he said he's going to finish it. That's what he said. Go ahead. Trust him. Stay the course. Take that stand. Make that move. Yield totally to his plan. And you will be able to endure all that the enemy brings your way. Amen. Psalms 37 and 23. The steps of a good man. Somebody, oh, I don't know. I ain't a good man. You better be one. I'm a good man. You're a good man. You're a good man. You're a good man. You're a good man. I'm a good man because I'm going to choose good over evil. I'm a good man. 
in this sense. Amen. Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Yes, oh, I like this next part. Though he fall. Okay, now wait. I thought you said he was a good man. Good men fall. <laughs> the one that wrote this fell. Good men will fall. So don't get it twisted. It don't make you not a good man. It's how you handle the fall. Amen. 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 You're a good man. Don't you let nobody label you as like there's no hope for you. When the word is telling you though he fall, he shall not be utterly what? I'm not finished with him. Though he fall, I'm still not finished with him. He will not utterly be cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his upholdeth who? The good man that fell. And I understand there's some of y'all, your expectations, you don't, you just don't believe good men ought to fall. Go find that place and camp out there. Because I'm believing what the word says. Amen. See, the crazy thing is if I taught that, you know, some folks teach that, that, you know, that folks can't make mistakes or whatever, I ruined my own kids. Can you imagine trying to live up to that? That's why a lot of these preachers' kids are Hebrew Israelites and all that old crazy foolishness. They can't live up to that. Not perfection. So the Bible said, though he fall, they say, though he might fall, he may, no, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him, how? With whose hand? With his hand. Oh, I like this next part. Mm, he said, I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet I, yet have I not seen the righteous. Nor his seed. <laughs> Look at somebody say, God's going to take care of us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to take. I haven't seen the righteous forsaken. God's folks don't go hungry. Man, what would the crowd of witnesses think of us? If we all out here going hungry and, and, and just panicking and all this, and they have provided all that we have now. Their faith brought us to this place. So we can't quit. Thirty-seven and twenty-six. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is what? His seed is what? Blessed. His seed is blessed. God's seed is blessed. You're blessed just because you're his seed. When you decide to believe on him, you're blessed. When you accepted him in your heart, you became blessed. You won't be begging bread or be forsaken. Okay, how many times you fail? Though he fall, you're not going to be utterly cast down. Finally, he says in 37, 27, he tells you how to get it all. Depart from evil. And what? Do good. Depart from evil and do good. You did evil yesterday? Depart from evil today and do good. You did evil for the last 10 years? Depart from evil. Do good. If you depart from evil and do good, you will dwell what? Evermore. Evermore. Everyone stand to your feet. (laughs) 
Man, I love when folks talk like this in the Bible. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous for a second. Hey Amen. You old and you haven't seen. Amen. Amen. I hope I look as good as Elder at 60. Amen. He'll outrun most of you in here. He won't walk the next day, but <laughs> gonna give you a good race. <laughs> but I thank God. Hey, man, I have never seen it, y'all. I can't even think of a time in my own life <laughs> where I've been forsaken. He always comes through. He always comes through. He always. <laughs> Always, always, times I thought it couldn't get any worse. This is the worst it could be. I'm going to die. And he comes through. And God is so loving, he'll sit back and he'll hold you. Yeah, yeah, you might die. And then he'll remind you, well, not until I'm finished with you. <laughs> That's the kind of God he is. Not until I'm done now. Now, you do remember, you're on my clock. You do work for me. Man, he's so good. He's so good. Never seen the righteous forsaken. So don't worry about it. You won't be forsaken. Don't worry about what they're saying. It's strong delusion. They lying. They talk. Whatever they're saying about your job. You don't worry about that. Get somewhere fast and pray. And hear the voice of the Lord. So your steps can be ordered by him. Amen? Amen? Everyone bow your heads. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll call you up. If you just want to call, just want to come up for um, whatever, just come up. I like that, see. You know, the old school folk are just going to come. I just want to, I just want prayer at the altar. Hey. You know, sometimes the word just does that. And but I want my steps ordered by the Lord in this season. No doubts. I want to believe. I want to know. I don't want the naysay to change me. I don't want what is happening with my family and relatives and different ones that are saying, don't even want me to come near them because I'm not vaxxed or whatever the case. I want my steps ordered by the Lord in this hour. I want my steps ordered by the Lord in this hour. I need my steps ordered by the Lord. Anyone else? God's power has been with us through this whole fad. He's just been with us. And he's going to stay with us. This is what he promised. So just trust him. Trust him. Anyone else? Let's just bow our heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your message today. Thank you, God, as you're teaching us how to love you with our lives. We thank you, God, for caring about us and giving us this information and pushing us along. And Father, most importantly, just helping us to adopt your way of doing things in this hour. I pray right now, God, for everyone that came up and whether they're even listening or watching this online or whoever it is, Father, God, that their steps will remain ordered by you. You said the steps of a good man. And many of us have so many negative thoughts about ourselves. It is the accuser of the brethren that is the devil to make us feel that we've blown it we can't finish it or we're too bad or we keep making the same mistakes whatever it is we're not going to listen to the devil so those father god that have been tormented by the voice of the accuser god we cast that voice down right now all suicidal thoughts all thoughts of displacement all thoughts of feeling that you aren't necessary that you don't matter that you shouldn't be here we cast those thoughts now 
every voice that is speaking it, every voice that is speaking doom and gloom, every voice that is trying to disqualify you, we cast it down right now. We speak against it so that you will see yourself the way Psalms 37 and 23 describes. A good man, a good person, a good woman. Because you choose to do good. You choose to do good. We all have the choice. But you choose to do good. We choose to do good. We choose to be good. And we choose to have our steps ordered by the Lord God. Even though we may fall, even though we may have fallen in the past, even though we may fall in the future, even though we fall, you will not utterly cast us down. You haven't given up on us. You haven't thrown us away. Father God, you will not forsake us. We're your precious prized creation. You want to win with us. How would you throw us away? And you made us. And you didn't just make us with forethought. You made us as an alpha and omega. Knowing the beginning and the end. You knew everything when we were saved by you. So Father God, you will not utterly cast anyone down. So we speak against everyone of those thoughts right now. Come on, everyone just lift your hands up. I speak life into everyone. You're not an accident. You're not an accident. You're not messed up. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't listen to the devil. We cast down imaginations right now. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We cast it down right now. You have purpose. There is a plan and God is going to complete it. He's going to do what he promised in your life. You're supposed to be here. This is where you belong. So we cast down the voice of the enemy right now. And we believe that as the end approaches, our steps will be ordered by the Lord. And he will not forsake us. In the name that is above every name, we break and believe by faith that it is so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for ordering our steps. Thank you, God, for holding us in your hand. Thank you for providing, for protecting, for preaching to us, for giving us the truth week after week, giving us hope, giving us faith, giving us the word to grow by. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, hug somebody and say, My steps are ordered by the Lord. My steps are ordered by the Lord. My steps are ordered by the Lord. God's got this. God's got me. I will be cast down. Though I may fall, I will not be cast down. Because I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He's merciful. He lendeth. And look at somebody else and say, and I'm blessed because his seed is blessed. I'm blessed because his seed is blessed. Hallelujah.